All right, guys, this is a super interesting video, I promise. Because we're going to have a look at server actions in Next.js, and I'm like so, so hyped about it. Because, like, this is the definition of making coding life easier. And I would love to say it's my first time with you now going through this, but um, since I had some recording issues, it's actually the second time I'm doing this. But this is good for you. So let's just start right off. We first need Next.js 13.4. And we can simply get that by running npx create next app. And yes, we'll want TypeScript and the name of that will be server actions next. Right. And then I'll just go yes, yes, yes. And we'll wait until the setup is done. Okay, now all is set up and we can jump to that directory. Server actions next. We'll open up VS Code. And within the new app directory, we'll find a layout file and a page file. The layout is essentially like it says, I mean, it's the layout. And the page file basically contains your kind of first component. It's the page, but it also contains all of the boilerplate right now. So first things first, we're going to run that to see that it's actually working. So this is actually the base boilerplate page, which we're going to edit right now. And we're going to remove all of that and first We'll replace it with a simple hello. Okay, that works. And the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to use some kind of newsletter subscription form, which I've prepared. Let me quickly paste that in here. And here we go. We have two input fields and a submit button. And that's basically it. There's no logic behind it yet. It's all plain HTML with Tailwind, that's it. So yeah, nothing would happen really if we would submit that form because there's no action, there's no JavaScript listener, no nothing. What you can do now, you can define actions as functions, which in HTML normally is impossible because an action normally is like the path where form data is sent to. So it's a string normally. But what you can do with the newest version of Next.js is using server actions and those server actions you have to activate first. You have to go to next config.js, go like server actions true. Then you have to rerun the server such that the change takes effect. And now you can actually use server actions. So we go and write my server action or my form processor, whatever you want to call it. And this takes the form data that is being sent. I'll just type it any for now. And the only thing we want to do is we want to say lock this form data, right? And you will see that this is happening on the server, but for this to make sure it is happening on the server and to make sure it is running properly, you need to use a directive, use server. And this indicates to Next.js, this is a server action. And now it gets super interesting. Watch this. You can say form action equals my form processor. Now watch what happens. If I save this, I should be getting an error message because server actions must be async functions. All right, that's fixed. Now, it gets interesting. If I open up the inspector, some people would expect that when I submit that form, it would lock in the inspector, so in the client, right? So David, uh, info, uh, active node, and then we'll hit the submit button, but nothing is being locked on the client. However, we're getting the data on the server. So, Actually, what happens is, and this is magic, there was a request made to the server automatically. And now you can process all of this data on the server. You could write it to a database, you could do whatever, right? Now, this is cool, but it isn't yet astonishing because all of this, what's happening here, is done on the server. 
This is basically a server rendered component and it contains a server action. So it's cool, but it's not really front end and back end. But watch this. I can create this form component as a client component. So for example, my sub form. And the only thing that I'm doing then is copy the form over from what we have in the page. And we want to pass the action. All right. And we want to return all of that. And in our page, we want to use that form and pass the action that we created. And also what we have to do is we have to say that this is a client component because we're going to actually add some client stuff. For example, we want to do validation on that form. And we say, yeah, I mean like, and we say like, okay, console log when that form is being submitted. Now, what I expected when I initially used this is that with using on submit, we are overriding the magic that is happening in Next.js. Also, I expected server actions to not be passable to client components. It kind of would have made sense, right? So all in all, I expected this to not work. Now, now watch and learn. So we have this server rendered page. We have defined a server action and we're passing this server action to a client component. And we're also having our own unsubmit action, which could potentially override the listener from Next.js. Let's see. Let's just refresh, just to be really sure. Let's also open up the console here. Let's say test, and then go like test at activenode.de. And now when we hit the submit button, we get the event on the client side. So we are able to validate the form and the form data. But since we didn't call prevent default, the form was sent and that again is really sick because you can see the form was actually sent to the server. So server actions do work in combination with client components. I hope you find that as interesting as I do, and I'm really looking forward to use this in future projects. Thanks a bunch for watching. And if you want to know more about latest web development stuff, then join this channel and hit the subscribe button. Cheers.